Boxing King Media in association with Boxer with the new WBC interim champion. Um, how are you, Sky? I'm good. I'm, I'm all right. I'm not bad. Um, it's nice to see you out here in Orlando, Florida. We've got Sonny Edwards and Bam Bam Rodriguez facing off in a bit. But uh, before we get uh, into that and about your fight, I just want to speak to, uh, to you about the uh, initial circumstances, moments after your fight, because I think it's only right we speak about that first. So I just want to, I spoke to Eddie about it yesterday and he spoke about it in quite detail. Just tell me what you recollect from it and break it down, what, what happened when you first knew something was wrong. Um, it wasn't until after the fight uh, that I realised um, there was a bit of commotion going on in the front row. Uh, Sabrina and I both had no idea anything was happening in that last 30 seconds when uh, it initially happened. Um, we hugged at the end of the fight, we went to each other's uh, corners, shook hands and, and then that's when we started to see there was something going on. I think, um, I think at first... I just assumed someone had fainted. It was really hot in the arena. Uh, but then we started hearing things of a heart attack and and, and realised, obviously, it was a, a lot more serious. So, um, yeah, it was... It all happened very fast, but it was, yeah, it wasn't a, a very nice situation. It definitely wasn't how you'd, um, you'd want to celebrate winning. So, uh, yeah, it was... It, yeah, absolutely horrible. I, I haven't stopped thinking about Sabrina. Um, we've we've sent each other a couple of messages since the fight, and um, yeah, I just I hope she's getting the support and, and finds strength to to get through this horrible time. I can't I, I, honestly, I couldn't imagine what she's she's been through this past week. Yeah, definitely not. And it's worth highlighting that, and obviously yeah. yourself as well, because because you was in the ring as well, and I can't imagine it being easy because it's something of your opponent, her husband dying ringside, um, it can't have been easy for yourself as well? No, of course. I, at the time, I didn't even know it was her husband. I I, I didn't know her, her trainer was her husband. Um, but, yeah, obviously, as all of these things started coming out and, and being confirmed, I just... My heart broke for her. Um, she's She even said in her message to me, like, this is my life partner um, who's always been there and now he's not. And um, obviously, she's she's dealing with a hell of a lot it's not just losing a boxing fight she's she's lost her life partner and her whole life's been turns upside down so um no I, I it hasn't sat very well with me i haven't felt like i could really celebrate winning it hasn't it hasn't been a, a, an overly joyous experience unfortunately which um yeah i'm sure you can understand but yeah that's that's life unfortunately um it was horrible timing horrible circumstances and yeah, my, my heart's just with Sabrina Perez and her family. All I could say on that is you can't you know, blame yourself for it or beat yourself up about it because unfortunately it is life and these things happen and it's the only guarantee we have in life, which is death. And obviously it unfortunately happened for him in that moment. Um, and obviously just going on to your performance now, you know, we've spoken about it so many times over the years where people are like, you get a lot of shit online about, oh, she doesn't stand on trade and she, she's not getting knockouts. But we saw a different side of you, somebody, he was fighting like somebody, in fact, he was fighting Mexican style yeah. in, in Mexico. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think I got to showcase a glimpse of what we've been working on. Still definitely not the full product that I want to be showing everyone, but um, we definitely got to see bits, uh, uh, more bits of, of what I'm doing, what I'm working on, um, trying to be more comfortable on that front foot and being more spiteful and aggressive. And um, yeah, I feel like I did get to showcase a little bit more of that. And um, I think as I step up in opposition and, and obviously I've got another 10 rounds banked, I've I'm getting that experience in. Um, I think we're going to keep seeing a more polished, uh, finished product. Did, did it feel nice to read like positive comments? Because I'm pretty sure the matter shit you read about yourself, that, that must have felt good to kind of get some credit, even if it was from a small select community. Yeah, um, to be honest, I haven't been on social media much since the fight. Um, I did need a bit of time to just switch off and be on my own. Uh, especially considering everything else that happened um, after the fight. But um, the stuff that I have read and the messages people have sent me, um, the feedback's been very positive about my performance, which has been uh, really nice. Uh, but like I said in my interviews before the fight, um, my my driving motivation isn't the respect of boxing fans because if it was, <laughs> you're kind of you're, you're fighting a losing battle there. But um, I was happy that... Um, people could see a little bit more of what I do and what I'm working on and, and I'm hoping that I can I can keep yeah 
growing from that and, and, and becoming a more finished fighter. Well, talking of that, in the, I don't think you've got any time left now because you're the interim champion and, and Amanda Saron is fighting in the next few weeks, funnily enough, at this venue. Yeah. Um, so is that next or are you looking to get something else in between? I think we might defend the interim um, just to keep me active um, before hopefully uh, the, the big fight. Uh, so uh, I am planning to fight one more time before the end of the year, um, late November, early December, it'll look like. Um, but obviously, as soon as that fight's... Um, there and available and ready um, I'll be there and ready and available so uh, no that's obviously the fight I want it's obviously the fight all of the prospects in the featherweight division are chasing and um, I want to I want to fight a, a good a, a good name in my next fight to show that I am a serious contender and I'm, I'm coming to win definitely so and uh, just to wrap up you know you've been quite lucky to fight all over the world what's been your favorite spot Oh, it's a hard one. Um, it's it's hard to top. The most enjoyable fight we experienced, like hotels and yeah. just the area, just everything. I think Madison Square Garden was obviously always going to be um, a hard one to top. It was on Taylor Serrano, which ended well, up it being was minus fifteen. <laughs> it was minus fifteen that went during yeah. that, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, it was it was cold, uh, but in terms of like historical moments that was a really special fight week to be a part of obviously so early in my career as well I think it was my third fight so um, but I've absolutely lo obviously loved fighting back home I thought it was really um, special to have my first title fight back home in Brisbane so um, all of the venues have their own special things about them and, and the cities I go to for my fight so um, no I just I love boxing and I, I love that it's a it's it's an international language you can you can go and do it anywhere around the world. I'm surprised you said that because I was there and that's the coldest I've ever been in my life. It was my, I remember buying a Starbucks and walking across the road and it was cold. Yeah, I know. It was, it was very, very cold. Um, but again, that's an experience. So for an Australian girl who's, it doesn't really go below 13 degrees Celsius back home, that was another experience for me. Yes, it is a good experience. And just talking to Starbucks, actually, how are you finding it? I don't know what it's like in Australia. Do you guys have to pay tips buying Starbucks? Because it's a big thing over here. And I was shopped yesterday. Yeah. I'm buying a Starbucks. They're expecting a tip over the counter. And yeah. if you don't, they give you a dirty look. I know. I have I have noticed that as well. I have just been pressing tip <laughs> because I'm like, I don't want these people to <laughs> hate me. Um, but, yeah, it is that, that's not a thing in Australia either. I think that's just uh, an American thing. I've been pressing down twice and pressing no tip because I'm not paying for extra 20% for a Starbucks. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, um, well, you're brave. Yeah. Well, uh, on that note, Sky, unless you've got anything else to add, uh, thank you for your time and um, you know, enjoy your victory. I know it was uh, horrible circumstances, but at the end of the day, look at the positives. Thank you. Thanks so much. Cheers.